What is going on everyone? It's your boy Salos and we are back with another Fire Emblem Heroes video. I know usually I only upload like guides and stuff, but I am just so excited about version 2.2 that dropped last night. From the banners, from the weapon refined, it's just so cool. This update is so amazing. So I'm not going to go over like the new units and stuff because I've... I'm just not, but what I am going to go over are these weapon refines because some of these heroes went from like the worst heroes to the game to like top tier meta threats. So I'm going to be going over these and you guys probably already know them, but I want to go over them anyway. And you maybe you don't know, so let's, let's hop into it. The first one I'm going to go into are the falsion refines and let me tell you, the falsion refines are interesting. I know a lot of people were expecting things like Breathbreaker and stuff, but we didn't get Breathbreaker, but some of them are still arguably just as terrifying, and we'll get into that. But the first one I'm gonna go over is the Falchion for Marth. And, I don't know, I've been hearing a lot of mixed opinions on this one. A lot of us read it. It's basically a drive skill for every stat. So, anyone who is in two spaces within Marth, he gets plus two to all their stats. Which, I mean, I guess if you have ally support and if Marth is on your main team, I feel I guess that can be pretty decent because that means he's going to give plus four to all stats if he's right there next to them. And if he's far away, he'll be giving plus three to those allies. But, I don't know, I feel like that's a little bit too situational. I mean, for in-game content, yeah, that's amazing, but in... Higher tiers of arena, I don't think this is going to be too substantial because Marth himself is not that amazing of a unit, but he, his utility is going to make him stand out from the crowd. But that's probably going to be okay for in-game content, but in, in arena, like higher tiers, like tier 19, tier 20, your heroes need to be doing multiple roles. Like they can't, like if you're a supporter, you, you have to be able to fight back. So. I don't know, some people are excited, some people are, I'm kind of iffy about it, I kind of wish that it was a little more, I'm not going to lie, but, I mean, hey, it might be for someone, maybe your Marth is actually kind of up there. Next, we're going to go to the Awakening Fal Falchion, which I believe is the second best of the Falchions, and I say second best because it really benefits Lucina, but Krom, yeah, we'll get to him, but basically, if they are standing next to an ally, they get plus four to all of their stats. That is crazy. Like, why couldn't they just give that to Marth? Like, I guess they they thought that giving plus four to all stats, like a drive is plus four would be too crazy, but with Dragon Soul Rampant, we need that. Like, don't, IS, don't be scared to do things that you think are broken, because in the famous line to Syndrome, and when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. Okay, I'm gonna start talking about Marth. Ron Lucina. But plus four to all stats. I'll take my Lucina as an example. My Lucina has 53 attack and 42 speed. That's at neutral, without any type of buffs. If she's standing next to my Takumi, which she probably is, because they invest my ally support, then she gets plus two to all of her stats. So she's usually at 55 and 44 speed. You add that Falchion Refine to that, Lucina is going to be so good. And I find that kind of fitting because I guess they're going for the whole, our bonds give me strength. So I guess that works. Yeah, it works for Lucina and Mass Mart, and especially Mass Mart because everyone has a Mass Mart. So it's kind of, that's kind of cool. I like that. And from, oh God, yeah. I'm sorry, even with plus four to all these things, like, Krom is not savable. Like, a, a max attack, Krom can hit 56 attack. So I guess if you have him at neutral attack, he'll be at 53. And even with his 25 speed, even if you have a, a boon in speed, then that's 29 speed. Then you do this false, false and refine, then that's 32 speed. And then you do dark, dark blow, that's going to be, like, that's, literally that's just going to be enough for him to not get doubled. And he's still not going to double, so, it's still just whatever. We might as well just put a breaker still on him anyway. 
but I feel so bad for Chrome. This was this was like his big break. Like this was his chance to shine, but yeah. Something told me like when Lucina and Chrome were gonna share the same refine. I knew it was gonna go very well for one of them, and for one that was just gonna go down the gutter. And unfortunately, that was Chrome. I actually wouldn't mind if they catered more to Krom than they did Lucina because Lucina is still, I mean Lucina is kind of drowning, like she's, she faces a lot of competition, I, I'm not gonna lie, but Lucina herself isn't a bad unit, she's just outclassed, Krom's a bad unit, I'm sorry, um, but it is what it is, Lucina's, Lucina's gonna be meta again, and she might be able to stand up to the, dra to the big bad dragons, she might be able to double some of them. I think that blue dragons are still kind of safe because they can just use triangle adept or the steady breath combo to just power their way through everything. But it is what it is. Maybe Naga can get a refine in the future, and then that's how we'll do with green with blue dragons. I suppose I'll get my chance another day. Next. We have the most broken falchion of them all. My boy Om um, went from like the bottom of the tier. Like I would actually consider Om um worse than Alphonse. That's just how bad I think Om um was. But now Om um has a brave falchion. Om um is the true dragon slayer of this game now. That is that is bonkers. That they gave Om. Um, his freaking double lion from Shadows of Lentia. If anyone hasn't played Shadows of Lentia, it was basically a skill that was exclusive to Om um, on his royal sword, and he paid five health, just like the fall of um, recoil you take, which is a nice little nod to that. And it basically allowed Om um, to have a brave sword. I forget how much might the royal sword had, but it was a pretty strong sword. Like, anyone who has played Shadows of Lentia, you know how broken that skill was and how that has carried you through so much. But yeah, it, it, Alm is just amazing. If you have an Alm, consider yourself lucky. I'm kind of sad because I did kill my Alm to give Jafar a wind sweep. And I kind of regret it now because Alm is a pretty, he's a five star exclusive, rightfully so now. So yeah, I, I still love Jafar more than Alm. So I don't know if I'm going to regret it too much, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Next we have, I never know how to say this name, X, X Stretch, what, whatever, Zephiel's Zef weapon, we're just going to call it Zephiel's Blade. Zephiel's Blade has distant defense, and I guess Intelligent Systems knows that people just gave Zephiel distant counter, so they didn't want to, I guess they didn't want to like make those people feel like they wasted their Hectors for no reason. So I can understand that, because even on the developer's maps, one of the developers gave their Zephiel Distant Counter. So I guess they're trying to cater more to people who are already committed so hard into their Zephiels, that's why they give a built in. And, I mean, I'm kind of fine with that. I mean, if you want to make Zephiel as broken as he was in the Binding Blade, then this will definitely make him that final in-game status boss. Because it's going to be very hard to kill Zephiel if he is from a distance. And if you give him like a close defense seal, Zephiel is going to be very hard to take down. And he also gets a new threatened defense, I believe. Yeah, he gets threatened, he gets threatened defense four. He, he, he does minus six if you're in his radius. So... You won't get in my way! Oh, and also this doesn't apply to dragons because Zephiel loves dragons and I don't know, I feel like they, they should emphasize on that more. I wish he would have loved, like, like if he gave, like, a home dragon. Think about, yo, that would have been so good. If his weapon gave plus six attack and speed, if he's next to a dragon, that would have been, so, like, that was so cool to see, like, Zephyr on a dragon emblem team. But it, it's, it is what it is. Distant defense, is. distant defense is cool as well. But I'm actually really in love with the idea now. I would have loved to see Zephyr with home dragons built into his weapon, but it, it's whatever. Next, we have Raven, who has, again, I'm not sure how to say that, I'm not even gonna try, but basically it's a 16 might slaying axe, which is cool. And then when you refine it, 
he has life and death three built into that thing. So Raven, when you combine it with light with the actual life and death, he has life and death six. And one thing that people always, my one, one argument that people always had about life and death is that you ruin their stats and ruin their bulk by doing that. But you have to keep in mind, if they have a decent HP stat and a decent defense stat, then speed can be used as an offensive and a defensive skill. I mean, as a defensive stat. So, I think that Raven hits like 45 speed when you do that. And not a lot of things out there can get 45 speed. Well, I mean, not many people can get 50 speed to double him. So, it's like very specific situations where Raven's gonna die, like he's gonna die, die to, to brave weapons, I guess. But, overall, this is, a, this is a very good upgrade for Raven. I'm, I'm happy for him, because anyone who's played Fire Emblem 7, you know that Raven was an amazing boss killer. He was an amazing unit in general. And I think I do have a plus speed Raven, so I might be upgrading that Raven pretty soon. Next, we have Hinoka, who has Hinoka's Spear, and I have already refined this weapon. I already know this one so well. Basically, Hinoka is the true Flyer Emblem Captain now. She, as long as she's in two spaces of a flying or infantry ally, then she gets plus four speed and attack, which is a little close to life and death on Flyer Emblem, but it's like built into her weapon and she doesn't take the, the um, defense penalty, which is actually pretty amazing because my Hinoka is plus defense, and she hits almost 30 defense with that. So when you put that into Flyer Emblem settings, she's gonna be pretty beefy, and you're not you're gonna have a hard time killing her. On top of that, she already has home flyers, and her refine is pretty much guidance for infantry and flying units, which is kind of cool. It's like a mixture of guidance and flyer formation, which I'll take. But honestly, I'm not gonna go for the effect. I'm gonna go for the plus three speed because having plus seven speed when she's in Flying Emblem on top before she even factored into the Flying Emblem buffs. Yeah. Yes, please, I'll take that. So, I'm not, I'm actually kind of excited to use Hinoka in Flyer Emblem. I, at, at first it was absolutely used Cordelia over Hinoka, but now Hinoka has a niche over Cordelia. You don't have to use Brave Weapons, which is actually pretty cool. I'm really glad to try and kill the Brave Weapon meta, because Brave Weapons are cool and all, we know how great they are, but they get kind of stale at times. And next, we have Felicia's Refine on her Felicia's Plate, which I guess is going to be cool to some people, because she gets a Slaying Dagger effect if she's fighting magic users, so she's going to be proccing Glacies pretty often on magic users. Which is kind of nice because you know that she has terrible base attack. And that's actually really nice for her. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for her because she needed that. And she also gets the Dragon Refine ability when you, up, when you upgrade her added effect. Which honestly isn't really as good as Dragons because Felicia is more of a mage killer. More so than an anything else killer. Like, if she fights a Brave Ike, not Brave Ike, if she fights a Vanguard Ike, I'm pretty sure Vanguard Ike is just going to eat her alive. Because even if she's hitting his resistance, it doesn't matter because Brave Ike hits like a truck and then he, she's not letting a Radiant Aether. So, I don't know, maybe it could have some use, I'm not sure, but I just don't see her really fighting things that can target her squishy defense. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I, I don't know. Overall, I think that in, that she is a better magic tank now because of Felicia's plate. I think that that I feel bad for people who like, gave her things like the kitty paddle, people who gave her the mulchy bowl or poison dagger, which was a terrible idea. Don't never give Felicia poison dagger. But now she has a niche in that, and she also has the debuff of minus seven defensive resistance, which is cool. And last, but Definitely not least, this is one I actually really want to try out, is Sheeta. And she has the wing sword now. And the wing sword is supposed to be a wing spear from what I hear. I hear that in Shadow Dragon, she had the wing spear and she was, she's more of a lancer than a sword user. 
but by gacha game rules, they can't, you're not allowed to change stats or change weapon types because in Japan that's viewed as gambling and once you've like, I guess like when you won the lottery, you can't really mess with things that are in the game because that's considered unethical. So all they can do is like kind of do these soft buffs, which is like giving them exclusive weapons or upgrading their weapons, but they can't actually change the stat numbers, which is why characters like Roy are just kind of screwed. But the Wing Spear is actually really, really good because it gives her the effective against cavalry and armor units, which are the most common emblem teams running around to date. But on top of that, on top of that, she also gets Mia's flashing blade. And although she has really low attack, she has a lot of speed. So having one more speed than her opponent is not hard for her whatsoever. I think she has darting blow built. I mean, I guess I think she comes with darting blow. So in a flyer team, she's going to be doing flashing blade quite a bit. And she's fighting armors like she's supposed to. It doesn't matter if she's like a wet noodle because you can give her something like... Um, you can give her something like Glacies. And she'll just, she'll just decimate an armor unit on their next counterattack. And she also, she's already effective against them, so... It's kind of cool. I actually really love Sheeta's buff. I think that Sheeta actually has a role on a flyer team. Now it's like you don't have to build your Paula's up, which I am so glad because I did not want to build a Paula. I was about to resort to it I cannot pull Alencia, I cannot pull Halloween Noe, but now you actually have a true, a true easy to access red flyer and red flyers are so rare. Take it from me, I know, I know this all too well. But for me, those are all the weapon refines. I believe that's all of them. If I, missed, if I missed any, I'm so sorry. Then I guess there is not too relevant to talk about. But what do you what do you guys think? What are you guys most excited for in this update? For me personally, I am most excited for Lucina's refine because that is going to be bonkers. Like Lucina's already in my in my main emblem team, but I'm probably gonna prioritize refining Hinoka Spear because I'm more interested in a flyer emblem right now. So maybe I'll actually a sheet him, and that might be something to look forward to as well. Is there a red in that new banner tomorrow? Because if there is, then that's the reason to pull for reds, because I can get the focus hero, as well as get, possibly get a Sheeta. Because she is not the rarest unit around, but we'll see. But yeah, for me, it's going to be definitely Hinoka and Sheeta. But what about you guys? What are you guys most excited for? But let me know that in the comments below, and I'm about to get out of here because it's already been a long enough video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys soon. Maybe we'll see some of the, maybe you guys see me with the Grand Hero video coming up soon. I don't know, Infernal Xander's coming up, so prepare yourself. Until then, later.